Never let your plans take the place of your faith. Now, I'm a guy who likes to make plans. I, I'm not a crazy person who schedules out everything in my life, but I do like to be able to be ahead and know what's coming and be able to control a little bit what's going on in my life. Well, lots of us have had to learn to hold our plans loosely during COVID, and James in James chapter 4 would seem to say that's probably a good thing for us. And he's continuing this theme of being humble, submitting ourselves to the Lord. And in verse 13, he says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. So he's basically saying, you can plan all you want to, but ultimately you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Your plan might go spiraling out of control, and you won't be able to do anything about it. Well, the problem is we like to try and make ourselves into God. We like to plan everything out so that everything, everything goes our way. We want things to happen the way that we think they should happen, as if we know best ourselves. And so there's a pride issue here. There's, whenever we overplan our lives and hold on too tightly to our plans, and whenever we get super anxious whenever things don't go according to our plans, it's because we're trying to put ourselves in the position of God. We've been talking about humbling ourselves before God, and that is incredibly important here. You go on in verse 14, it says, What is your life? For you are but a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. James gives us a little bit of a, a dose of humble reality, right? He, he says, what is your life? And it's just a mist. It's a vapor. This is really reminiscent of some Old Testament language that you see in the book of Ecclesiastes. It talks about vanity of life. And it's a really confusing book and it's a difficult book. And, but it's saying in the grand scheme of things, you look at God who has existed from all eternity past and has a plan over all of time and he will exist in all eternity future. And yet our lives are here in the middle and it's just a mist. It's a little vapor. It's a blip on the radar of time and existence. Now, is that supposed to be like fatalistic and make us depressed? No, that's, that's not the point here. The point here is that we cannot put ourselves in the place of God. We look at who God is over the span of time and then we look at our lives and see how little we understand, how little uh, we know whenever we make all of our plans. You think you can plan everything out and have your life neatly in order, but in the end, you're not God, and you don't know the things that God knows. And often, we need to humble ourselves before God and trust him with what is next. Go on reading in verse 15. It says, instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. Excuse me. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Now, he says a different way that we should word it whenever we're making plans, but it's not about the wording. It's not about the things that we say. Ultimately, it's about our heart. He's looking at the heart issue of boasting and arrogance and, and the evil that actually comes from that. Remember, early on, on in, verse four, uh, in chapter 4, he talks about how God opposes the proud. And so, the problem here is not that you have a planner. The problem is not that you make plans and that you don't fly through life by the seat of your pants, not just, just going with the flow and not making any plans whatsoever. That's not the problem. The issue is in our heart. Schedules and planners are good things that can be used for the glory of God, but when our faith when, when our faith is replaced by those things, that's where the issue comes in. Whenever faith in ourselves and our own plans becomes more significant in our hearts than our faith in God, that's where there's a problem. We, become, we start to boast in our arrogance, committing evil because we're pretending to be God in our lives. Instead, let's humble ourselves before God so that whenever we make plans in this life and whenever we uh, when, whenever we look forward to what's going to happen today, we hold that loosely, recognizing that God's plan is better than our plan, and ultimately we will follow him in whatever his plan is and whatever he calls us to do and however he wants uh, us to please him with our lives.